Today I'm showcasing loads of different methods that pro players use to lower their input delay. Please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this one. To start off, I want to talk about filter keys that has gotten quite popular recently, with many people saying it can make your movement feel more responsive and also your editing feel more responsive as well. But to be fair, I'm not sure if it's a placebo or not. If you want to try it out, there's two methods to get it. The first method is manually editing the filter key settings in Windows. You can actually change the settings yourselves in reg edit is a location on where to change the values some example settings of this are on screen right now but guys do do this at your own risk and research it or method two is to use the filter key setter after downloading it if you just extract the file then open it up these are apparently the best settings to use for filter keys that's ignore on zero repeat delay on 130 ms repeat rate on 20 ms flags on and available on again do this at your own risk and if you want more information slash in-depth tutorial check out the dedicated video i made all about it on screen next i want to talk about timer resolution which is another application people have been using to lower their input delay or at least they say it does i'm not sure if it's a placebo effect or not the app itself basically changes the resolution of the default windows timer and in turn people claim that this makes their gameplay feel more responsive gives them higher fps and even lower ping as always though, the results that you get will depend on the system you're using, so please do your research before setting this up. If you do fancy it though, it's a very simple setup, just literally download it. I believe this is the official legit one on screen right now. For some reason now you need to pay for it, I always thought this was free. But once you've installed it, if you just click maximum, that will lower your timer resolution. The next thing you want to do is open up your mouse's software, then click on it, and where it says sensitivity or DPI, you actually want to increase this. A lot of you are using using the outdated 400 but I recommend using at least 800 or higher and I explain why you should use a higher DPI in this video on screen. Along with increasing the mouse DPI I also recommend that you increase the report rate or the hertz of your mouse as this can fix things like micro stuttering and lower your latency a ton. A lot of people's max is a thousand but if your pollen rate goes any higher than a thousand make sure to use that. I know some different softwares like Razer can go higher with specific mouse models. Oh another thing inside the windows mouse settings if you use the default sense as well as have the mouse acceleration turned off this can benefit you a ton trust me you do not need to use mouse acceleration oh and inside your mouse software you'll notice the battery percentage you do not want this battery percentage to go anywhere below 30 percent battery life as what this will do is it'll initiate low power mode and apparently that can affect performance slightly. In addition, on your Windows settings, you should also type in display settings like so, then click on the first one. Then if you select your main gaming monitor and scroll down to where it says advanced display, it's really important to ensure that you choose the highest refresh rate your monitor has. So for most people, if you've got a 360Hz monitor, you should use 360Hz. However, if you do have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor like I do right here, it may only allow you to use a Hz that's a few pixels below and that's absolutely fine just make sure the highest one is selected next we've got keyboard optimizations now in your keyboard software you'll see an actuation point and for this a lot of pros tend to set this to the lowest one possible in order to get the fastest input as as you can expect the lower this value is the more sensitive it'll be and the higher the value is the less sensitive it'll be so most pros tend to put this to the lowest one possible to get the fastest actuation point you also may have a rapid trigger setting and this basically eliminates the second slowest element in input latency return key press travel before key activation this rapid trigger setting dramatically changes the actuation and deactivation point and your keys will actually activate before you intend to press them and deactivate when you intend to let go and you've got some settings you can play around with here you also may have an additional setting that can lower your input delay even more you can see here this cuts off 1 ms which is pretty good next we've got this post from Wooten titled what influences keyboard input speed and inside it you can see here that they basically state that RGB effects can put a strain on your CPU which can in turn cause input lag so many pros choose to either turn off the RGB effects or if they are using them which some of them do they choose to have a static preset so there's no RGB wave animations going on you also want to ensure that you're using the rear slash back USB port on your computer rather than the front one for latency sensitive devices 
like your gaming mouse, keyboard and controller. Next we've got the best Nvidia settings. Now straight away I recommend using the latest driver. It's something Epic Games themselves recommend. Alternatively you can use an older driver like any of these legendary ones on screen. After that though if you go inside your Nvidia control panel then click use advanced 3D image settings then simply use all of these that have been optimized on screen in this video right here. Next on your desktop press Windows key and R then type in percentage sign local app data then you want to press F scroll down until you find Fortnite game and this right here is what we're gonna be resetting. We're essentially gonna delete it but if you're a bit worried about that you can make a backup but I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight for it and literally press the delete button and just like that it's been deleted and the reason for this is it gets rid of all the old outdated files and replaces them with brand new ones. If you scroll down to the Fortnite game folder you'll see it's reappeared with brand new fresh settings. Just go inside of it then go into saved then config then windows client and here is your fresh game user settings config file. Next up some pros choose to use a stretched resolution to gain more FPS and in turn lower input delay along with other benefits. Most pros right now are using 1720 by 1080 and they usually set up stretched res using one of these three methods on screen. However in this video I want to show the quickest one that's the config only but for the other two lower delay methods you should check out this guide on screen I'll leave a link below. On your windows desktop though you want to firstly press the windows key plus or inside the run box type in percentage sign local update a percentage sign then press f and find the fortnite game then click on save then config then windows client and here is your game config or also known as game user settings now firstly before opening it you want to right click on it and click properties and make sure you uncheck the read only box it needs to be unchecked at this current time click apply then ok then we can go ahead and open it up inside here you want to scroll down to near the bottom where you should see a couple of important commands. Uh, the first four are these ones right here and then the second four are these ones. For the first four right here that's the resolution size you want to go ahead and change this to your desired stretched res. I'm going to go with the popular 1680 by 1080 so I'll firstly change the x on both that's resolution size and last confirm and I'll scroll down slightly and where it says desired you want to change that also as well as the last confirm desired too and once you've done that you can click file and then save then don't forget to go back onto your game user settings file right click on it head into properties properties and now we're going to go ahead and click the read only box apply and ok. The reason we're doing this is so that Fortnite doesn't automatically reset it back to the default res which it will do if this is unchecked so make sure it's checked when you're using stretched res. That right there has been a few different methods that pros use to lower their input delay. Before you do go though feel free to check out any of my other videos on screen that will probably help you out a ton.